We all want the best for our babies. At Little Saints Academy, we're not your typical daycare. Our strong Abeka and High Scopes curriculum help our children learn to read at a fast and efficient rate. In fact, our four to five year olds will be readers and be prepared to pass the Mississippi Kindergarten Test. For applications and admission questions, please visit gbtchurch.org. Little Saints Academy, 1411 Robinson Street. It's daycare, not just play care. Today on Victorious Living. He also told us, amen, you're going to get into some scary situation, but he said, don't fear. And what he is telling us, hallelujah, amen, that I don't care if you're on the stormy sea, amen, and it is raging. If I'm in the ship with you, what do you have to worry about? Hallelujah. You may have condition in your body. So what? I'm here to tell you that, amen, the God that we serve is chief physician. Hallelujah. You may, amen, have a burden on your shoulder, but I hear him saying. This is Victorious Living from the ministries of Greater Bethlehem Temple Church based in Jackson, Mississippi, comes this edition of Victorious Living with Pastor Robert Fortson. Brother Evan, the 20th chapter, 24 through 31. Hallelujah. From the book of St. John, the 20th chapter, verses 24 through 31. But Thomas, one of the 12, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see his hands, the prints of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days again his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then said he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. Hallelujah. I... want to try and with prayers and support from you to give this message a little justice. Tommy came to this revelation. It's not just a saying. But he came to this realization that Jesus was his Lord and his God. Amen. In the Old Testament, throughout the law, when instruction was given to Moses to give to Israel, God told Moses to tell Israel that I am the Lord. And then he told prophet at times when they would prophesy, he said, you tell them that I am the Lord, thou God. And what he was simply saying that whether you know it or not, I'm the ruler, amen. And if you don't know it, 
I mean, if you don't realize it in the action that you do, then you're going to realize it in the action that I take towards you. Amen. They <clears throat> many times fail to recognize it. But every now and then, God had to show up and show them who he was. Hallelujah. I, I don't know about you, but amen. I want to bow in that passage of scripture that say every knee should bow. Amen. But there's going to come a time where every knee shall bow. He is Lord. But when you bow, you are becoming subject to him and you're taking recognition that he is and you're allowing him to become the ruler of your life. But when you fail to submit yourself to him and allow him to become the ruler of your life, there's going to come a point, amen, that he's going to rule everything about you and you ain't going to have nothing to say about it. Hallelujah. But Thomas, hallelujah, came to the realization that he was, Thomas said, my Lord. Now Jesus said these words to when he did the Sermon on the Mount and he was closing it out. He said, now everyone that says, Lord, Lord, amen, shall not enter in. Just because you say he is Lord, amen, you're not necessarily going to make it or be saved or you're not going to have the blessings and benefit that God wants you to have. But he that heareth these sins of mine and do them, hallelujah, amen, uh, then you're going to have the things that he say you can have. Because you hear and you do simply mean that you have made him, amen, Lord of your life, amen. Lord mean ruler. Hallelujah. If I say amen to Brother Kenny now, uh, I said, Brother Kenny, stand up. All right. He's still sitting down. So apparently I'm not his Lord because he's still sitting there. In this particular instant, I'm not his ruler. Hallelujah. But if I say to Alex, stand up. Amen. So Alex have actually, now I didn't tell Alex to stand or Brother Kenny to sit. They chose to take that action themselves. So he chose to allow me to rule, take the rulership in that particular instant, and Brother Kenneth didn't, but, I never, but thank you for helping me preach this morning. Now, the point that I'm making this, you all, is that if you're not doing what God, amen, tells you to do, hallelujah, according to his word, then he is not your Lord. Hallelujah. He, he's not the one that you're following, amen. And some of you might as well just go ahead and acknowledge the fact that you are, the Lord is far from being your Lord, hallelujah, amen, as a, a, a long distance, amen, uh, as the back of the church to the front of the church. Because you pick and choose part of him that you want to do, hallelujah. I, I, I want you to know that the real benefit, amen, is not in saying it, but the real benefit is in doing it. And it's such great benefit just wrapped up in it when you allow him to become the Lord of your life. That's, I, I've said this before and I say again, that's why some things in your life, amen, you acknowledge God because you want God direction on it, but there's other things that you don't spend too much time acknowledging God because you really don't want to hear what God got to say. You've already decided what you're going to do. You've already decided where you're going to go. Amen. And then I, I know you say you prayed, hallelujah. But when you prayed, hallelujah, you already had determined your answer from God before you prayed. And if God say anything different than what you want, amen, it ain't God. Hallelujah. Amen. But Thomas said, my Lord and my God, my ruler. The person that's going to rule my life, my supreme being, hallelujah, my sovereign, hallelujah. 
Amen. Let me tell you this, you all. Once you totally submit yourself to God and do what your Lord say do, you can't go wrong. Things got to turn out right. Hallelujah. I, I keep telling the church, amen, God wants to lead us every step of the way. He wants to be the one that order our footstep. And I'm the kind of pastor, and I want you to pray much for me. All I want to do is what God wants me to do. And let me tell you this now, God is not going to follow, amen, the ordinary way. If he's going to just follow the ordinary way, amen, then he's not going to be God. Because God is not ordinary. He's not going to just do things, hallelujah, according to, amen, uh, 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 the minds of people. Uh, if he would do things just according to the mind of the people, that means that, amen, his, he would be, amen, subject to us or no higher than we are. But if he's going to do some miraculous thing, hallelujah, he's going to do some unusual thing. And just because God leads you, amen, in an unusual situation, amen, don't feel, hallelujah, in a strange way. Just feel like God is up to something. Yeah. Amen. Let me tell you this, hallelujah. The Jericho wall will still be standing, amen, if, amen, we were some of the father of, of Joshua. When Joshua told us to march around, amen, for uh, uh, seven days, once a day, six times, and seven times on the seventh day, amen, we would have still been sitting in the camp. Yes. Hallelujah. You were saying, God didn't tell me. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. When God, amen, told Joshua to tell the people, he said, just tell them to shout, hallelujah. You would have just been mumbling with your mouth closed, and, amen, and just as stubborn and stiff-necked, amen. I ain't going to be shouting like somebody crazy. Hallelujah. Amen. But when you allow God to lead you and direct you and be God in your situation, you're going to see some unusual things. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't you know God told us there's some things that we don't need to think about? And if God telling us that we don't need to think about it, he's telling us that I already taken care of it. Yeah. Hallelujah. You know, your pastor, sometimes he hold back on certain things because I don't like to hurt nobody's feeling. Y'all understand what I'm saying. Hallelujah. But I'm going to tell y'all something. God going to show us something. He's already shown us something, but he's going to show us something. Hallelujah. Amen. And, and, and let me tell you this, you all. Uh, sometime, amen, you put it in motion, amen, and God take it from there, amen. And, and, and before you look up, it is, it is over. Hallelujah. I'm trying to get you to the point to let you know that God is God. And he want us to come into the revelation that he's Lord and he's a dynamic ruler. Hallelujah. All he want us to do is just follow. Get on one accord and just follow and watch and see what he does. And then he said, I'm God. I'm the supreme being. Hallelujah. Amen. I can do what I want to like I want to do it when I want to. Hallelujah. He said, look, I can become anything I want to and never cease to be who I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me ask you this. Is there anybody here expect anything different out of the ordinary from God? Hallelujah. Amen. He's going to be God. And so... In this passage of scripture, it was a great revelation that took place. Brothers and sisters, if we would take clo pay close attention to the word of God, we would see whereby God has already taken all of the era where man usually worry, God have taken that out of our life. 
Hallelujah. Whereby there is nothing in life, amen, that we need to concern ourselves about. We just need to serve God. That's the way God wants us to feel. There is nothing, amen, in our life whereby we need to worry. Because God, hallelujah, is going to take care of us. Amen. God, amen, put within my heart today to let the church know, amen, that I'm going to take care of you. I'm a God of my word. Hallelujah. All you got to do is just follow me and go with me. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to get you there. The more you delight yourself in my way, the more you serve me, the more you, amen, tread, amen, the path that I put before you, the more I'm going to unfold to you in your life. Amen. He wants to get us to a point, hallelujah, whereby we're not concerned about tomorrow because the same God is in today, amen, is going to be there in tomorrow. Hallelujah. And so in Philippians, the fourth chapter in verse six, he said again to the Philippian church, now, let me tell you this, you all. You don't always, amen, say the things that people want to hear and the things that are good and God tells you to say when you're in the ideal situation. Because God wants us to understand this, amen, that situation, hallelujah, don't control as to how you are. Hallelujah. People think that in order for them hey, to be in the best situation, they have to be in the best place or in the ideal situation. But God wants us to understand, hallelujah, that, hey, man, we can be in a good situation in a bad, in the most, un, amen, desirable place. Hallelujah. He wanted us to get to that realization. He didn't tell us that we was not going to have no trouble. He didn't tell us, hallelujah, amen, that we was not going to have problems. But he said, see to it that you be not troubled. Hallelujah. He also told us, amen, you're going to get into some scary situation. But he said, don't fear. And what he is telling us, hallelujah, amen, that I don't care if you own the storm and sea, amen, and it is raging. If I'm in the ship with you, what do you have to worry about? Hallelujah. You may have condition in your body. So what? I'm here to tell you that, amen, the God that we serve is chief physician. Hallelujah. You may, amen, have a burden on your shoulder, but I hear him saying, cast your care upon me because I care for you. You still might be in that same situation, but you don't have the care because you're giving it to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you stop staying up wondering about your, your son or your daughter, where he is or, or where, what they are doing. Hallelujah. Amen. If you're giving it to Jesus, go to sleep. Yeah. Hallelujah. Y'all don't hear me. We worry because we choose to worry. We worry because we don't believe God. We worry because we don't trust him. If I give God something, hallelujah, I don't have to continue to monitor it. The fact that I continue to monitor it tells God that I have not given it to him. You're still holding on to it because that's why you're crying. That's why you can't sleep. That's why you're stressed out, because you still got it. But he said, give me your cares. He said, be careful for nothing. He said, look, don't worry. He said, can you trust me with your problem? Hallelujah. Then bring it to me. That's what he meant when he said, be careful for nothing. But... By prayer, wit, supplication, by prayer and supplication, no, with thanksgiving, that's what it say. In other words, you talk to God, you actually, amen, petition him, 
And even if you ain't got it yet, amen, before you get off your knees, say thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, Lord, my daughter is gone crazy. I don't know what she is. Amen. But I hear things that's not good, and I want you to take care of it and, 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 and bless, Lord. And then you said, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, do y'all think that this book is written that way, hallelujah, in order for us to not believe it or believe it? But by prayer with supplication, but by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, just let your request be known unto God. Hallelujah. He said, just tell me what you need and what you want. Let me tell y'all this. Your pastor got enough sense not to try to paddle this canoe himself. Because I'm going to tell you, I don't know how to get from one bend to the other one. But I got enough sense to acknowledge God. And say, God, what you want me to do? Which way you want me to turn? And all I have to do is just hear from God. And let me tell y'all this now. Y'all think, I I'm getting to the point where I believe God more and more and more and more. Hallelujah. So what do that mean? That means that what? Amen. If I'm believing God more, amen, and God, amen, understanding is much higher than I. Hallelujah. If, 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 let me ask y'all this. Don't y'all think God going to do something sometime that we don't understand? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm not talking about no sin or anything of that nature, but I'm talking about just allowing God to be God. So he said, be careful for nothing, but by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, just let your request be made known unto God. And it says something here, you all. Let me tell you this. This is so important, and we're going to talk about it in just a little bit because we're going to move on. Amen. He said this. He said, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding. That, that means that God has a peace, amen, that's going to do a work that we're not going to even understand. Hallelujah. It said the peace of God that passed understanding that it's going to go beyond your imagination and your thoughts. You know what it's going to do? It's going to come to the part of you that if it can fix that part, then everything else about you will be fixed. Hallelujah. I want y'all to understand that, amen, you can have a mess up body, but if you've got a heart that's fixed and a mind that's fixed, amen, so what? The peace of God that passes all understanding, amen, you still got that same problem, you still loaded with those, amen, same trouble, but he said the peace of God that passes all understanding is going to comfort that part about you, hallelujah, that when he fixed that part, you're going to be fixed up. What part are you going to fix? The peace of God that passes all understanding shall comfort your heart and your and mind through Christ Jesus. So when God fix your mind and fix your heart, I want you to know that you are fixed. Yeah. Hallelujah. Y'all know I'm right. It's not what you're going through. It's how you feel about it while you're in it. Hallelujah. Before the cross, hallelujah, the disciples, they ran off because their mind wasn't fixed. Hallelujah. Peter, amen, cursed and said, I don't know him. Amen. I'm not going to say the curse word because I don't know what it was, but Peter denied him three times. I don't know the man. I told you I don't know the man. I wasn't with him. Hallelujah. He got an attitude with it. And all of a sudden, he heard the rooster crow. Hallelujah. But on the other side of the cross, hallelujah, P 
Peter said, look, if we are called to question about this man whom you crucified, whether we should obey him or you, amen, you be the church. But he said, we can't help but to speak the thing that we have both heard and seen. Peter said, I can't hold my peace. I got to tell the story. It's because his mind been fixed. Hallelujah. If your mind not fixed, you'll take down on one side. But when God fixes, you'll stand up. A lot of times people run from trouble. But after Peter and them got whooped, hallelujah, they came out of the jailhouse. <laughs> hey! Shouting and praising God because I was found worthy to be persecuted for his name's sake. And then they looked at them people and said, they said, them guys know they crazy. They said, these are ignorant men, which means that they hadn't gone to our seminary. Neither the cemetery. <laughs> Amen. But they took knowledge, hallelujah, that they've been with Jesus. I want you to know that when you actually be with Jesus, amen, he will do something to your mind. I said he will do something to your mind. Let me tell y'all, when he is your Lord, it really doesn't matter what you go through. It really doesn't matter that much what people say about you. It really doesn't matter, hallelujah, how they think. Because he told her, he said, look, if they do it to a green tree, what you think they're going to do to a dry? Hallelujah. He said, they hated me without a cause. And if they hated me, certainly you're going to be hated and rejected just because of me. I want you to know the more you delight yourself in God, hallelujah, the more persecution and it's going to find you. The more trouble going to find you. Hallelujah. But that's all right. He said to them in a passage of scripture, y'all may not believe it, but I'm moving pretty rapidly. I'm not saying all I want to say because I'm trying to get somewhere. But it said in the passage of scripture, Thank you for joining us. If you'd like a copy of today's message, need prayer, or have questions about receiving Christ in your life, give us a call at 601-354-2599 or visit our website at gbtchurch.org. Victorious Living with Pastor Robert Forkson is brought to you by the Ministries of Greater Bethlehem Temple Church, Jackson, Mississippi. We all want the best for our babies. At Little Saints Academy, we're not your typical daycare. Our strong Abeka and High Scopes curriculum help our children learn to read at a fast and efficient rate. In fact, our four to five-year-olds will be readers and be prepared to pass the Mississippi Kindergarten Test. For applications and admission questions, please visit gbtchurch.org. Little Saints Academy, 1411 Robinson Street. It's daycare, not just play care. 601-357-1111.